Howdy gamers, let's talk about the runes for Galio mid lane and support as that's his two most viable roles. And honestly, there's not much difference between the, the two roles in terms of the runes you run. So starting off with mid lane, the keystone's going to be Aftershock. After you immobilize an enemy champion, which is going to be through your W or E or even your ult, you're going to get increased armor and magic resist by 35 plus 80% of your bonus resistances. Um, and then you also deal um, damage in an AoE around you after a brief delay, after proccing Aftershock. The damage is pretty meaningful for Galio as it's going to be based on your level and a lot of what Galio is trying to do is get damages off his base level. Since he also functions like as a pseudo tank, the Aftershock is going to be giving you your most meaningful uh, uh, stats throughout the game. You're negating a lot of your damage through CCing the enemy champions but then also through your W giving you damage reduction. In combination with Aftershock, um, even when you're on top of 5 people, it's still going to be... Um, meaningful resistances to let you survive after landing one rotation of your full combo and then letting you get another one off. That's the value of the durability versus having extra damage in some other rune combination. The thing is with Galio 2, even if you were to have um, the extra damage from say summon airy plus like Scorch or something, right? The extra damage from that built up would be okay with his Q poke, but you'd be giving up so much durability and whenever you go in on Galio. If you don't have that durability, you simply die. And <laughs> you don't the extra damage really isn't that much. You're basically dealing as much damage with the defensive runes. Even when something like Electric Q, you would have more burst on a target, yes, with Electric Q, but again, missing out on that durability. Even if you're killing that target, you're just functioning as like a worse version of another champion. Say um like a champion like Zed using Electric Q versus a champion like Galio. So with uh in the laning phase, Aftershock is functioning either as your neutral tool or your offensive tool. In melee matchups, you, it's kind of a neutral tool where you can always be pushing the wave against them. And then if they ever try to dive onto you, you can either use your E or the W to proc it. Ideally the E, as your W is also going to be giving you damage reduction. But if they're already on top of you, um, having the Aftershock means that they can't just jump onto you and then like deal the damage that they need to to kill you or gain a lane advantage for free. Against ranged matchups, it's kind of just a punish of once you're on top of them, it's more damage. And then in in higher MMR situation, in a 2v2 mid lane, the Aftershock is going to be negating the damage from two champions, and you start getting way more value. And then come team fights, the Aftershock is going to be blocking damage from five champions, potentially. And that's when you get the most value from it. Even though it does have to scale with the resistances, um, it's not so bad for Galio. Even though you're itemizing... Um, a lot of ability power early. Get, going into Zhonyas or something is going to give you more armor. And then missing out on the magic resist isn't that bad as you have a lot of ways to negate magic damage anyways through your W shield and then through the W active. So for the second rune, it's going to be shield bash. When you're shielded, you gain, um, you gain armor and magic resist based on your level. So this is basically, for most of the game, you're going to be getting those resistances. Even though it's like super small amounts, it is something. And to get it for free and so consistently on Galio is really unique. And then whenever you gain a new shield, your next basic attack against a champion deals bonus damage based on your health, the shield value, and then your level. That damage is kind of just natural, so every time they take away your W shield, it's once you gain a new one, anytime you actually land an auto on them, it's just simply going to be more damage. So it kind of synergizes with how Galio wants to function as like a pseudo tank, where once you're actually on top of someone, it does just simply give you more damage. The only thing you'd be missing out on would be Demolish or Font of Life. Galio mid lane is just looking to push out the lane, not so much hit the tower, so Demolish doesn't have good synergy. Font of Life is okay, but generally you're going to be getting more value out of Shield Bash, and it gives more power to you. Font of Life would give more value to your allies. If you are playing with a champion like Graves or Kinder Jungle, like maybe consider running Font of Life as the 2v2's mid would be more advantageous, and then come mid game, if you're playing with like Jack's top lane, Normal ADC, etc. Font of Life is going to be giving them more value whenever you're team fighting. So you can have this trade off, and losing Shield Bash isn't so bad so long that your allies are gaining meaningful value out of Font of Life. For the third rune, your good options are Bone Plating or Conditioning, depending on the lane. Most lanes you're going to want Bone Plating as it effectively just gives you more HP. Um, with Bone Plating, after you take damage from an enemy champion, the next three spells or attacks against you. Um, you receive less damage based on your level from them, and then it's on a 45 second cooldown. 
Since Galio is so concerned with spinning his health pool for pushing out the minion wave, bone plating actually gains more functionality than most champions can make use of. In melee matchups, it's obviously going to be its most valuable as it's going to synergize with Aftershock. Even if the, jam the champion jumps on you and you, um, you take damage initially, bone plating is going to be blocking that damage, effectively giving you more health. And then you have time to proc Aftershock or just simply walk away from them. In a ranged matchup, it makes it so that even if they're spending abilities on you while you're pushing out the wave, they're not dealing as much damage to you. Something like Second Wind is better for tank matchups in which you can't push out the wave. So let's say worst case scenario, you were playing Udyr into like Syndra. You'd be getting pretty good value out of Second Wind. Um, but Galio doesn't need that as he can push out the wave and then recall to regen his HP. And by having the bone plated, it makes it safer for him to do so. With conditioning, after 10 minutes, you gain plus 9 armor and magic resist and then gain um, bonus armor and magic resist by 5%. Um, if you have a lane matchup in which it's already naturally winning or losing, conditioning is a pretty good option as you can't make use of bone plane. If you can't make use of bone plane in the laning phase, um, just getting the free stats from conditioning is going to help you from 10 minutes and um, 10 minutes and onward. <clears throat> so a matchup like that, I suppose, would be a champion like Orn, uh, where Orn mid lane, where it's a tank matchup and you're both just kind of attacking the wave and not so much each other. It'd be something to consider. For the fourth rune, it's going to be overheal or overgrowth. Um, for every for every minion that dies near you, or for every eight minions that die near you, you gain three maximum health. And then once you've absorbed 120 minions, you gain an additional 3.5% maximum health. This, in combination with aftershock and then bone plating, or not bone plating, um, shield dash, just gives you a lot of tankiness just from the runes. And that's really all Galio is looking for. Like as I said, it's easier to get durability. Um, through Galio's runes than it is to get um, through itemization. And it, the offense that you're buying through itemization in the game is going to give you more value than anything you could run through the runes. So for the secondary runes, it's going to be the Sorcery Tree with Nimbus Cloak and Transcendence. Nimbus Cloak has a pretty special use case with Galio as um, last season Galio was nerfed so he can't channel his W and then flash. But you can flash and then channel your W and the disadvantage that Galio has is that he doesn't want to build like Righteous Glory or anything. But with Nimbus Cloak, um, you still have this engage potential with your W. So you would simply flash towards the enemy, use your W or the Proto Belt to get on top of them, and then you actually have an engage from like a distance that you otherwise couldn't have without Nimbus Cloak. Um, and what Nimbus Cloak does is after you cast a summer spell, you gain movement speed, increase that last for 2.5 seconds, and then the movement speed increase is also based on the cooldown of your summoner spell. So Flash is one of the higher ones, so it's going to be giving you more percentage movement speed. It's also going to be useful whenever you use Ignite, I suppose, in lane, um, but it's mostly just for that chase, pound, chase down potential in a team fight. And then with Transcendence, um, you might be thinking, like, why not run Gathering Storm or Absolute Focus, or even just both of them together versus Nimbus Cloak. Um, you're really just looking for utility and runes, as that's what all these runes are um, prior to the Sorcery Tree. And with Transcendence, it's going to give you 10% cooldown reduction at level 10. And Galio uses the cooldown reduction a lot better than other champions, as his cooldowns are a lot longer. And again, it's easier for Galio to itemize ability power than it is for him to itemize cooldown reduction. If you're building, um, let's say you're winning and you're building Proto Belt Ludens, it's going to put you at 40%, which is really solid. Um, it's going to mean that you just have like no um, downtime in a team fight for your basic abilities. For if you, if the game's even and you build something like Proto Belt Zhonya's, it's still going to be putting you at 30%. So long that you're above like the 10 or the 20%, then the cooldowns are just more meaningful. And to get the second rotation of your abilities off is like everything on Galio. So you gain way more utility through the 10%, and you just don't need the extra power early or later um, through the ability power that could be offered from Gathering Storm or Absolute Focus. Um, another option you could go with would be Monoflow plus Scorch, but you'd be giving up um, the Nimbus Cloak and Transcendence for a little bit of laning power, and Galio doesn't really need the extra laning power against his opponent, um, as you're mostly just pushing the minion wave against them and negate negating the laning phase altogether. So that's that. With the Adaptive Runes, I think uh, you should just go AP, AP, and then depending on your matchup, uh, you can switch the last resistance, so... Obviously, if you're into Kiana Zed, Lucian, you want the armor. And then if you're into Syndra, 
Vigar, Oriana, etc. in the mid lane, you want the Magic Resist. So these would be the default runes I'd recommend for Galio mid lane. Um, some variation, like I mentioned, the Mana Flow and Scorch is it's not bad, but I don't think it really synergizes with how Galio wants to function. If you're trying to play to win lane, sure, the Mana Flow and Scorch is gonna help you do that. And then you also have the option of like Minion Dematerializer and then Cosmic Insight or Free Boots. Cosmic Insight is going to give you 5% CDR on your summoner spell and your abilities and even items. So Galio can make use out of all of that. With Minion Dematerializer, um, if you were to run this, you'd be best off using it twice on, a, on melee minions and then once on caster minions. As it will help you one-shot the wave at just different timings. But it's more useful at higher MMR, especially when managing the wave is more important. Um, and then only a few matchups would you need to do that. Um, maybe champions like Aurelian Soul, where they're just counter pushing the wave constantly against you. Maybe then you would outweigh um, Nimbus Cloak and Transcendence with that, but it's a pretty unique use case. So these are, again, the default runes I recommend for Galio mid lane. So for support, um, really all you're changing is the secondary runes in um, Hextech Flash and then Biscuits. As Hextech Flash is going to give you a flash whenever your flash is on cooldown, and as Galio support, your whole purpose is to flash stun the enemy, and then once it's down in the laning phase, this lets you um, catch the enemy out either from a bush or f just from the fog of war um, whenever they're moving up the lane, so then you can catch them out again with your E and W. You can actually close a lot of distance with Galio's um, Hextech Flash plus the E and W. With Biscuit Delivery, it's mostly for the mana as it's harder to itemize mana items on Galio support, obviously. Um, so with Biscuit Delivery, you're going to gain a Biscuit every 2 minutes until 6, and then they restore 10% of your missing health and mana. In the laning phase, you're primarily spamming your Q, so if you've done that and you've poked down the enemy, kind of similar to Fiddlesticks, where you want to be spamming that until you're literally out of mana, and then use the Biscuits. So then you have the mana to spend your E or your W to finish off a dive on them. And uh, that's basically it. Uh, it's going to increase your maximum mana by 200, and then you just don't have to itemize a uh, mana item. You can build it into something else. And then for secondary runes, since you're playing support, you probably want to go double resistances, um, which is usually going to be armor and magic resist. You can even go cooldown reduction, as you're just primarily um, trying to spam your W and E um, at the later stages of the game and conceding the early power. The extra ability power offered from this is okay, but... Uh, having the extra scaling on the cooldown reduction is going to make you more useful as other supports are just going to be uh, on lower cooldowns on their abilities. So combating them is more important than having this like maybe plus um, 32 damage from the Q with the ability power in lane. If you are playing into a lane like Lucian Senna, sure, just run the double armor, Lucian Pike, etc. But in most cases, it's going to be armor plus magic resist. And then you don't want to run the scaling health as you're going to cap out around like level 9. And then you're just going to be missing out on value from this. And having the resistances from level 1 is going to be giving you way more value from the start. And it's important that you can tank as much damage as possible, levels 1 to 4. And then come mid, or just throughout the entire game, um, you're going to be playing with those resistances. And they just stay being useful at all stages of the game. So that's the Rune War Gallo. Literally nothing changes in the support role. I suppose you should try to run Font of Life more often in the support role. Um, and that's it. So... If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I answer literally all of them. And if this video helped you, leaving a like on the video helps me. Uh, so, And twitch.tv slash sorry Nelson, links in the description. Talk about League of Legends there too. Nimbus Cloak is actually so wild on Galio. Like, you just flash and run him down. It's so crazy, man. Bye-bye.